the bigger your dream is, the bigger your what you want to manifest is, the more people you have to get involved because we manifest through people, right? The more you share your idea with others, the more likely it's going to reach someone who can really help you. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today's episode is on creativity, connecting with your inner child, manifesting, and healing. Our guest today is Annie Tarasova of Dreamy Moons. Annie Tarasova is an independent artist deeply inspired by the mysteries of the universe. Through her guided journals and beautifully crafted oracle decks, she encourages others to see the magic within and around them, facilitating a safe space for self-exploration. Hello, Annie. Welcome to the podcast. How are you feeling today? Thank you so much for having me. I feel great. It's a beautiful day outside and I'm just happy to be talking about everything I'm passionate about. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. And I also noticed that it's also daytime there. What time is it for you in Australia? Yeah, it's 9.30 (laughs) a.m. I love that we can make the timing work. It's 4.30 p.m. for me right now (laughs) and it's still bright. Yeah, I just had breakfast, did my morning routine, like, yeah, feeling good. Great. Okay, so Annie, why don't you start by telling us your story, like growing up in the Russian countryside to becoming an artist and then creator of Dreamy Moons. Yes. Okay, so it's interesting. Yeah, when people ask me when my creative journey started, I always think back to my childhood. My most favorite thing to do as a child was creating little books So I would write my own stories about, you know, fairy tales and Atlantis and unicorns and I would staple the pages together and I just had like stacks and stacks of those books. So for me, I feel like that was my most favorite pastime and I feel like now it is full circle and I'm doing the same thing as an adult. But yeah, growing up in Russia, it was, um, it was interesting for me that countryside is kind of where my connection with the universe and with nature began. So it was a very, very sacred place for me. And, you know, when you're little, you don't really care. You don't know politics. You don't care about economy. So for me, it was just like frolicking in the grass, like hanging out with my grandmother, making little magical potions out of flower petals. Yeah, it was really, really special. And then um, in so majority of the year, I would actually be in Moscow, which is quite a an intense city intense in in a way that's like it's busy it's very built up there's not much nature so for me every summer spending that in the countryside and in Russia you get three months of summer holidays so it was three months of Mm -hmm. the year pretty much a quarter of the year um yeah I would be there so that was my paradise that was my heaven yeah Yeah. I love that you can feel like you've always had this magical creative element to you ever since you were a child. So tell us about the journey in becoming an artist. Like, was this something that you always wanted to do or did you kind of have to make some like, you know, detours and turns along the way? Yes, definitely. I feel like looking back, I know being an artist was always like my true path, but there was definitely a detour on the way. (laughs) So I moved to Australia when I was um, 11, almost 12 years old. And I feel like that was such a key kind of time in my life where I was really figuring out my identity and I had to, you know, adjust to a new culture, a new language, new friends just like everything new. We didn't know anyone in Australia. So my parents took a huge risk for the best, you know, to give me and my sisters a better future, which I'm so like, so eternally grateful for. I love living in Australia. But going through that move, I would say, even though I'm so grateful for it, for a teenager, a bit traumatic, you know, you have to entirely, you know, change your life and start fresh. And I was really missing my friends. So why I I started with that is because it came with some sort of a, maybe not denial, but a part of me definitely closed, you know, trying to fit in. So I lost touch with my inner child around then. And my inner child is that part of myself that was creative, that was imaginative, that was frolicking in the grass and making those books. 
So yeah, adjusting to a new culture, I lost that a little bit. I was still making art here and there, but it wasn't main part of my life anymore. And when I got closer to finishing high school, I became really passionate about health and I still am. Um, but I was in particularly interested in natural healing. So naturopathy, so, you know, herbs, um, nutrition, <laughs> mindset, all of that. So yeah. after high school, I decided to study naturopathy. So I went to this like private college and it was very interesting. Um, I'm very grateful for that part of my journey. But about two years in, I felt like something was missing and it just felt kind of, something just felt wrong. Something just felt off. Couldn't put my finger in it. But I decided to take a break for six months. And in that time, I created my little Etsy shop called Dreamy Moons. I just named it Dreamy Moons because it was simply watercolor moons. And I didn't even intend to start a business that was not not even a thought in my mind at all. I just thought, okay, I'm going to paint these moons. If people like them and buy them, it will just motivate me to create more so I can reconnect with that part of myself while still pursuing this other career path. So art was not even a plan <laughs> as a career at that stage. But yeah, when I started putting my work out there, more and more people became interested and the feedback was really amazing and motivating. So yeah, as soon as I started putting all of my time and energy into that, it kind of just flourished organically. And it was almost like a separate entity that was growing on its own. And I had to adjust to its own growth, which is beautiful. Like I'm not complaining about any of that, but it was a journey. It was a journey, definitely. Yeah. And that was over eight years ago. So it's been over eight years of doing art full time because yeah, I obviously didn't wow. end up finishing my course. As soon as that started, like, you know, really um, going, that was, I realized, oh, that's the thing that was missing. I feel so in my element now. It feels so right. I'm back, you know, to that inner child that was creating for fun. And the the fact that it supports me for a living is simply a byproduct of just me following my passion. Yeah. I love that story. I love that for you, that it just happened so organically. And it's, I love that you say it kind of like took its a life of its own. <laughs> like you couldn't really control it. It just grew on its own. That's a great, like, that's always great to hear. It's time for a break for today's sponsor, 23andMe. As someone who cares deeply about wellness, I'm always looking for ways to support my health journey. That's why I'm so excited about 23andMe plus Total Health. 23andMe Plus Total Health is a platform revolutionizing the way we think about longevity and proactive health. It isn't just about genetic testing, it's about creating a health plan that's personalized and unique to you. They provide advanced genetic screening, potentially leading to early disease detection and prevention, as well as comprehensive blood testing that goes beyond routine labs to evaluate how your health is changing throughout the year. I'm also excited to find out my biological age, which tells you how old you really are internally based on biomarkers. This is a number you can slow down or even reverse with the right lifestyle choices. If you want to take your health to the next level, try 23andMe plus Total Health. Advocate for your health today. Go to 23andMe.com slash TLL for your limited time offer. That's 23andMe.com slash TLL. Disclaimer, Total Health membership includes services initiated and performed by third-party clinicians and lab providers through the 23andMe platform. Additional terms and conditions apply. See 23andMe.com to learn more. Total Health membership is not available to residents of Hawaii, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and U.S. territories. Let's talk about that the story of Dreamy Moons. Like that you say you've been doing it for eight years. So I guess what were like the key moments of it like growing or evolving? Were there any changes that you made in the process? So in the beginning, I was figuring out everything myself, step by step. I didn't have any friends that were doing the same thing and I didn't have anyone to ask for advice. So it was literally, you know, trial and error experimenting. Um, I've definitely made mistakes and I learned from them. Maybe if I was to break it down into stages, there would be this stage of the first watercolor moons. And, you know, I was packaging um, everything from my parents', <laughs> parents house bedroom, my little tiny bedroom. I don't know how I managed to do everything there. <laughs> 
Okay, the next stage would be when I started making things that you can actually interact and use. So not just prints on your wall, but actually things like cards and calendars and diaries. So that was a huge step because that's what I sell now, things that you can actually interact with. I created my affirmation cards maybe seven years ago. That was a huge new chapter because I realized, oh, okay, this is so much more fun for me to make, like actually things that people can use in their lives, you know, as a part of their morning routine or, you know, pulling a card when they need some guidance. So for me, that added a whole new level of meaning and purpose to my work instead of just a beautiful print, which is, which is nice, of course, in itself, but I needed something more like that. So the next chapter would definitely be me organizing a warehouse in 2019. Christmas 2019 was really, really overwhelming for me. And I don't want to complain about getting a lot of orders, but my most favorite part of my work is making and creating new things and being creative. And Christmas 2019, I was literally stuck in my parents' garage packaging for nine hours a day (laughs) to the point of my hands being bruised. By yourself or did you have help then? That was another huge learning curve for me because I did not want anyone to help me. I was so private about what I was doing. And my parents, you know, my mom would offer help sometimes and I would be like, no, like this is my thing. Like I just want to do it the way I do it. But that was the beginning of me opening up to other people and then allowing them into, into this space and, you know, to handle my little baby <laughs> pretty much. So that's when I decided, okay, I need to do something about this. Let's, let's work this out because I don't want to start resenting what I do. I need to kind of t- um, get someone to help me to take care of this part of the job so I can actually do things that I truly, truly enjoy, which is designing and, you know, making art. So yes, I found a warehouse in Melbourne. It kind of all aligned effortlessly, moved all of my stuff there. And it was the most perfect timing because I think like three weeks or two, two weeks after that happened, the spicy virus (laughs) began. Right. (laughs) And then all the borders closed. um, And yeah, so that was actually really amazing timing because I ended up getting stuck in another state. So I wouldn't, I wasn't able to go home for like five months. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> did that era help your business? Like, or, or how did it impact what you do? It actually did help. It did because I think a lot of people were just spending lots of time inside and also lots of people were having really big feelings and they needed journals to, you know, pour their hearts into. So yeah, it was actually good in that way, but you know, bad in so many other ways. Amazing. Um, what goes into the inspiration for your art or even when you're creating like decks or journals? A lot of the um, journals and cards that I make kind of reflect what I'm going through at that particular point in time. For example, when I made the um, very first book, Manifest book right here, um, I was super into manifestation and the law of attraction. And I was just like so like infatuated with that entire concept and idea. And I was really using it in my life. So I really wanted to create a journal about it. And then recently I published my Aphrodite's journal, which is all about self-love and pleasure and connection with your body and senses. And for me, that's exactly what I was going through that time, you know, really rediscovering my feminine energy and opening my heart to love and all of that. So I think one of my inspirations is definitely my personal journey, what I personally need. What I need in this stage of my life is what I want to make for others as well. Mm. Um, Yes. So And definitely, you know, more general things like being inspired by nature and conversations with my friends who love to go deep and other artists and also my dreams. I have, um, I go through periods of very vivid dreams and I've even had dreams before where I am in my dream mind art gallery and I'm just walking around the art gallery and I'm just looking at all of the paintings 
And then I'm, you know, trying to remember them because that's literally, you know, inspiration for my heart. <laughs> that's amazing yeah. that you have that. <laughs> wow. So you just see art in your dreams and then you're like, oh, let me try to recreate that in real life. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Not all the time, but every now and then I go through a period of specifically vivid dreams and it's great. Yeah. I just feel like you're one of those people who are more connected with like the divine or something otherworldly. Do you know what I mean? Like some people have, whether you call it intuition or creative, like there's whatever label you want to give it, but I I get that vibe from you. (laughs) Have you always been that way? And do you have, I guess, advice for other artists to like connect with that? Yeah. I do want to mention, I feel like we all have access to that part of ourselves, whether it's intuition or, you know, the source or the divine wisdom, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. Everyone I feel like has equal access. It is how much can you open yourself to it and how much can you, you know, clear your channel and calm your mind to access those higher messages or visions. Absolutely. I would say, create without any expectations and attachment to the outcome. Definitely. Like actually take time to play, to play with paints and to, you know, do random shapes. There's this actually really um, interesting popular game that I love to play with my friends where one friend draws a shape and the other person has to complete it. So do things like that that help your mind to get out of the box that you yourself built there. Um, Mm. For me, I'm really loving exploring um, paintings currently. So like acrylic paintings. And for me, thinking in a more abstract way has been helping so much. Try to think as abstract as you possibly can. For example, think of an object and then think, okay, this object has this use in normal life. But if this was like another planet and an alien found the same object, they wouldn't know its use. So what could they use it for? You know, for example, like a fork can be a hairbrush and stuff like that. Just thinking outside of the box. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that. Wow. I love it. Do you have any, I guess, rituals that you do in your life, whether it's like before you create something or just morning, evening rituals that you want to share? Yes, definitely. Ritual is an important part of my life, definitely. I try to have this sense of ceremony in a lot of things that I do because I feel like it adds this sacredness to your daily life or to anything you want to create. I do my yeah daily yoga practice every morning. Actually, something that I love to do every morning after I do my stretches and I sit with my cup of tea, I think of three things I would like to manifest for that day in just three words. For example, confidence, energy, inspiration, or pleasure, fun, and healing. So just three simple words. And for me, just like putting that intention out there every single day, even if you don't remember it five minutes later, for me, it's just like, it does something to me. Like I've been doing actually Mm. that for like a year and a half. Now, like it's an essential part of my practice saying my three words in the morning. I just say them out loud. Um, and that's it. Like, that's it. I love it. I, that sounds so like, I already can feel how powerful that can be. Just like deciding I want my day to be these three things. And it's so simple, right? Just like three words. Yes. Before I have a big product launch or like big release or a sale, I like to journal about it and I journal about it as if it has already happened. So I would Mm. write like, okay, so I just, I released this product. It got this many sales. I feel so good about it. People really resonate with it. So I do that like before I launch, I write as if I already launched it. And I feel like, yeah, that also kind of makes you feel this new level of confidence and excitement and inspiration. So then obviously you will just attract that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm manifesting queen over here. (laughs) I love it. All right. Let's take another quick break. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
I'd like to take this moment to thank you for listening. Yes, you. Whether you just discovered this podcast or you've been listening for years, your support truly means the world to me. As we embrace the season of gratitude, I want to remind all of us to appreciate not just those around us, but also ourselves. It's tough managing the demands of life and it's okay to seek help. Therapy can be that extra support we all need. BetterHelp makes it accessible to work on how we cope with daily stresses and grow our resilience. Whether it's managing stress better or navigating personal challenges, BetterHelp is there to help us take care of our mental health. If you're considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And you can always switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash TLL today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TLL. About like creating and launching new products, like earlier you said you create without being tied to the outcome. But of course, as a business owner, you want the outcome to be good. So Mm -hmm. in creating a product, do you think about, oh, this is what people will like? Or do you just create what you want? Like, how do you navigate that? Do you know what I mean? The artist and then the business side. Yes, yes, definitely both. It's very, very important for me to create things that I am excited about and that I want to personally use because that's when you know, when you're excited about something, that's when you create with your heart and not so much with your mind. And, you know, on the other hand, I obviously have to be conscious of the market and what people want, what people expect. Yeah. It's been an interesting balance. I think it's just, it's just being selective about ideas and while also tuning into the heart because you also want to create things that are unique. <laughs> like I don't want to make things that everyone makes because then, you know, why would what's the difference, you know? Um, so, for example, the Aphrodite journal, again, I come back to that idea because I think it's a pretty unique idea for, for a guided journal. I haven't seen anything like it. I knew that I needed it. And I also know, for example, in my own friend circle, my – friends and myself we need that connection with our feminine you know we're all boss girls and we kind of lose touch with that slow and sensual part of ourselves um so I just kind of guessed that people needed to but then of course I get silly ideas that I probably are not not that wouldn't be that popular so I just don't go ahead with them but honestly, it's, it's been pretty good so far. It's been pretty good. I've been hitting, hitting the spot. <laughs> how long does it take for you to create a journal like Aphrodite journal? Depends on the journal and depends how much, you know, how much writing I'm doing for the intro and everything and how much art I'm doing. The Aphrodite journal, I would say, took me about five months. I see. So do you like to work on like one project at a time or are you the type that has like a bunch of projects that you work on simultaneously? Yes. I try to do one at a time. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes I have to, I have to kind of start something else, but I can't fully commit to two, two projects at the same time. I'm a monogamous yeah. kind of girly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think it's more effective that way. It's it, just as a creative, I want to understand how other creatives work. Cause some people have like 10 billion ideas and they're trying to pursue them all at once. And some people just do one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you're just working on one project, you are already on that kind of wavelength. You are in that frequency and it takes a lot of energy and time to get out of that frequency to focus on an entirely different project. I feel like it's so much more productive and faster to just work on one thing while you're in that wavelength instead of constantly switching and wasting that time and energy. Yeah. Yeah. What about like managing like your social media and everything outside of creating project products though? Is that difficult for you then to switch? Yes and no. I feel like because I've done this for such a long time, it is just like a natural part of my practice. And I've separated myself personally from it enough to not be too attached to, you know, the engagement rate and all of that. And I actually treat my social media or Instagram at least as kind of fast food 
art while I'm working on my slow cooked art. So the reels that I post on my, yeah, yeah. So the reels that I post on my Instagram, I still love doing them. It's super fun. It's quick, but it's fast food. You know, people see it and they forget about it the next day, but I kind of use it to keep the momentum going while I work on my slow cooked food, which are actually my, you know, my journals, my card decks, my diaries, that is the slow cooked, (laughs) slow cooked. And Uh, yeah, no, I like that. I like like that framework. Okay. Let's talk about art as a healing tool, because clearly you like to use art for healing and self-exploration. I guess, what advice do you have for people to start using art in this way? Yes, definitely. I think it's important to know that you don't need to be an artist to use art for healing. Like, I feel like so many people kind of completely close themselves off from this beautiful form of therapy. It can be therapy if you if you want it to be, um, because they think, oh, I'm not good at art. I've you know, maybe I made some art when I was little and my mom told me it's ugly, (laughs) you know, but it really doesn't have to be this way for, it can be healing simply to even use one color and paint the entire page in just that one color. It can even be healing to paint like a child, paint like a child to connect with your inner child. And who cares if it looks ugly, right? When I was in Europe a couple of months ago, I hosted some really beautiful workshops in a few cities and a part of the workshops was using art as a tool for healing and manifestation as well. So I would guide people through a visualization meditation through their mind garden, heart cave and soul. And then after we would do a journaling session and people would draw what they saw in their visualizations to kind of have this physical thing to take away with them to remember the experience and then we also used art again for this manifestation exercise where I got people to imagine their desire in an abstract form so like what would your desire look like if it was a shape if it was a color if it was a texture like is it moving is it still is it spiky is it soft so I got them to visualize that and then we put that abstract visualization on paper. So that was also really, really powerful. Um, Maybe not so much for healing, but for manifestation. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's talk more about manifestation since it seems like a big part of your life. We've talked about manifestation many times. So like, don't do basics. Give us like a little bit more advanced, (laughs) advanced tips or practices that you do for manifesting. I don't know if there are actual specific practices that I do. It just happens a lot of the time. I guess what I shared before, that's that's a definitely a practice that the I do. Three words. Yeah, journaling as if it has already happened and trying to bring up those feelings, like really feel those feelings as if it has already happened because I feel like that helps you to get into that vibration of your desire already, you know, yeah. being alive, being in this world. And that's how you bring it to life. But a lot of my manifestations recently have felt like such just coincidences. Oh, actually, I remembered, I had this revelation the other day that the bigger your dream is, the bigger your, what you want to manifest is, the more people you have to get involved because we manifest through people right? The more you share your idea with others, the more likely it's going to reach someone who can really help you. And someone can be like, oh, "Oh, yeah, I know this person who can really assist with this. Or, oh, I have this thing and you can come here and do this. And it's, you know, you have to, you definitely have to put yourself out there. At the workshops that I did, it was super effortless for me to organize because I shared about it so much with people, with friends when I was traveling, even not knowing if it's going to happen or not before I even organized anything. I would just talk about it all the time. And I kept meeting people who would say, oh, I would love to come and do music for this event. Or I own a yoga studio. Oh, that's you can so come cool. to my studio. It just like fell into place with the right people. Exactly. So we manifest through people. It's really hard like to manifest anything if you are just 
on your own by yourself in your room. So you have to get out there and talk to people, even if you know, even if you don't know if it's going to happen or not, talk about it. Yeah. I love that. What a great tip. And then something else that comes to mind, you know, the journaling as if it happens. I think people have probably heard of that exercise before, but I think people have trouble overcoming like the self-doubt that you naturally have. Like, let's say you have a launch and you're trying to put yourself in that like very bright, high vibration, but you still have that self-doubt. Like, is it really going to happen? Is it really going to succeed? Do you deal with that? And how do you deal with that? Yes, definitely. And it requires a healthy amount of letting go. Um, And it's hard. I don't really have an answer for that because it's just a human thing. Of course, we're going to doubt things. But you have to allow yourself to be excited by the mystery because you don't actually know. You just have this idea of you might fail, but you don't know. So why not just feel excited by the fact that you don't know? And I feel like this excitement, <laughs> this excitement. Yeah, like, I think because most people have like anxiety that it's going to go wrong. It's going to like the worst is going to yeah, happen. Course, but yeah. you're able to find excitement for the mystery. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you know, sometimes I just like to think of life as like one big like game or like a quest. And I'm like, oh, cool. I have this new health issue now. Fun side quest. Let's go heal my body. (laughs) That was interesting. (laughs) No, obviously it's not going to relate to everyone and everything, but sometimes it's a fun, playful mindset to have. Yeah. It's all how you like frame things. Everything's just a perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Why I mentioned that is because I'm currently going through a couple of health issues and I'm I'm like, cool. You want to share and go talk about that? I can talk about it for like just two minutes because it's not that exciting, but I'm still dealing from toxic mold poisoning that I had in back in March. Yeah. Because I went traveling I was in Costa Rica for five weeks and I left my house empty. And where I live, it's a subtropical climate. So we have dry season and wet season and it was wet season. So it rained for the entire five weeks, came back to a moldy house, but I didn't realize it was moldy because it actually looked completely clean. Anyway, lived in that in my house for about a month until I started getting serious symptoms, brain fog, like waking up, looking like I've been stung by bees, couldn't figure out what was going on hormone issues fatigue um yeah yeah, crazy yeah and I'm still healing from it it's actually systemic so the mold is in my body (laughs) (gasps) like that that's one of those it's hard to diagnose too because people don't they have all these symptoms and they don't know what the source is but at least you found the source exactly and I mean wishing you the best with that thank you so much but this kind of relates to what you were interested in before right the natural healing and exactly yeah yeah yeah. I have a great naturopath that's healing me I've got my acupuncture I've got my herbs I've got my vitamins I'm good I'll be fine good good I'm happy to hear that all right it's time for another break for today's sponsor Shopify it's workbook season at the lavender shop and for the past six years we've been proudly hosting our shop on Shopify Before Shopify, I was struggling with trying to sell via my blog, but that just didn't cut it. Switching to Shopify transformed everything. The platform is so easy to use, allowing me to customize our shop, navigate effortlessly, and access all the crucial data from a single dashboard. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business with their all-in-one e-commerce platform. With Shopify, the checkout process is super smooth, making it easier for customers to buy what they love without hassle. I'm grateful to have a platform where I can reach customers worldwide with the most efficient tools available. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout we use with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash TLL, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash TLL to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash TLL. Let's talk about connecting with your inner child because it seems like that's a big part of your story and you're, you seem very connected with that side of you. What advice do you have for people who feel very disconnected from their inner child and how do you start reconnecting? I think it's remembering what things really lit you up when you were little. What were you excited by when you were little? Did you like to explore in nature and like ride your bike? Um, Did you like to play a certain game? Did you like to spend time with animals? Did you like a certain type of craft or activity? So I think it's just returning to those 
childhood memories and remembering, but also trying new things as well. And I think it's all about being playful. So like try, like find more play in your life and do things that you don't usually would deem as productive. Because when you're little, when you're a child, you don't care about productivity. You just follow what is fun, right? So it's literally just doing things that are fun. But as adults, we're just obsessed with being productive, which is like so yeah. destructive. <laughs> but yeah, of course, we have to be to survive in the society. But also, yeah, allow actually carve out time to do things that are fun and playful without them being productive. Do you have examples of how you do this in your life? Like let's maybe a week in your life. How often are you working and how often do you make time for like other things like joy? It depends if I am actively working on a certain project, how busy work is. But every day I try to find something that brings me joy, even if it's like just a beach walk at a dog beach where I get to see all the dogs and pat them. Oh. I'm really lucky <laughs> to have beautiful friends here who are interested in the same things as me, who also really value inner child connections. So we laugh a lot. You know, we play Uno. We have nature days where we all bring our um, artsy things, clay, you know, painting stuff, watercolors, and we just have these little nature play dates, which is what kids would do, right? They would just create That's together. That's so cute. That's rare to hear as an adult. <laughs> it also depends on where you live. Like, can you, do you have the nature around you or the friends around you <laughs> with the same hobbies? Definitely. I think, yeah, community is definitely very, very important. And being able to have these little play dates with your friends who also value in a child and just laugh together and be silly. And um, yeah, just... You mentioned that you moved to this this new city in Australia. I already forgot the name. <laughs> but you mentioned you moved to this new place because it has a creative community. Um, tell me about that decision. Like, did you already have friends there? Or yeah, so I currently live near Byron Bay, which is you know known for their <laughs> hippie community, very surfy. Um, lots of entrepreneurs, lots of creative people, which is great. You know, none of my friends have nine to five jobs they all have their own their own things which is super cool but don't get me wrong nine to five jobs are super important and are needed in this society too <laughs> but I first actually traveled to this area in 2016 a couple of months after I started Dreamy Moons so I still had my little Etsy shop up and I went on my very first solo adventure when I was I think I was um 20 yeah. Wow. And um, I just fell in love with this area. I was traveling by myself. And, you know, when you travel by yourself, you just meet the coolest people. You just somehow attract these really cool opportunities. And I just remember lying on the beach and just thinking to myself, whoa, like this feels like home. I feel like I will live here one day, even though it was like on the other side of Australia to where I was from, which is Adelaide. And I returned a few times since then. I didn't know many people. Um, so I actually initially moved to this area with my partner at the time four years ago. And then we split up after a year of living together. And I've just been, you know, loving it ever since. Like you've made your own friends since then. Yeah, I met a really beautiful group of women like a week after I moved here four years ago. Nice. <laughs> like, and I'm still friends with them to this day. And then, of course, like met many more people since then. And yeah, it's, yeah, I'm so, so grateful for this community and this sisterhood that I feel like I didn't really have in Adelaide. So I really, really missed that. And now, yeah, my heart is feeling very nourished. <laughs> <sighs> I love hearing that. And I, I ask you about that because I know it's going to be very inspiring for our listeners to hear because I think environment is such a huge part of our soul nourishing environment and community, right? So sometimes you live in a place where you don't feel connected to the people or the lifestyle and like to hear that, you know, what you've done, like it's possible. You can find a place where you feel like you can find your people and, and that's what you've done. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm very grateful. Um, definitely, I suggest going to events that you are interested in, like, you know, like women's circles, kind of small social things where you can really meet like-minded people and really putting yourself out there. Workshops, 
full moon circles or whatever you're into, any kind of like, you know, book clubs or anything like that. Yeah, put yourself into those group things and group events. Yeah, yeah, love it. What would you consider like one of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome in your art career or business that you'd like to share? Yes, actually, it's about money. <laughs> I I didn't grow up with money, so I was taught from a very young age to save everything. And I would get a tiny bit of pocket money and I would save every single thing when I was little. And I would just be like so proud of myself. I remember when I was little, it took me like, <laughs> it took me like three years to save what would be 30 Australian dollars. <laughs> and I was so proud of myself. And then I just spent it all on like lollies. <laughs> but but oh. basically, yeah, as a, as a teenager as well, I had a couple, um, jobs in like hospitality like subway (laughs) making sandwiches Mm -hmm. yeah and I was so good at saving because yeah I was in that mindset of like I have to save everything so when I first started dreaming moons I had to learn how to spend money and it was really difficult it was difficult to be honest yeah because obviously you have to invest into your business uh, to then to for it to be business even you know you have to spend money so for me letting go of those precious savings and you know it was a risk as well it's a risk every time you know I print you know for example a thousand Aphrodite journals and I have to pay for that up front believing that okay that will go well they will sell so for me the lesson was to be able to let go of money um to allow money in so it's like a it's a flow right you have to free that flow and to free that flow you have to give to receive. So true. I love that. What new projects or I guess future areas of exploration are you excited about now? Like, do you have any goals for the future of Dreamy Moons? Definitely. Well, in the very near future, I've got my 2025 diaries coming out on the 1st of September, which are all about astrology and mindfulness and self-reflection and intention setting, which I'm nice. very excited about, called Year of Growth. And then in also in the near future, I am opening a warehouse in Amsterdam to cover European orders. So that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole new step. But I'm also really, really excited about doing more events and retreats. Like what kind of events and retreats? Tell us more. (laughs) Yeah. So the workshops that I did a couple months ago, as I said earlier, it was about going through your mind garden, your heart cave and your soul. So it was a very visual journey. And in each one of those realms, you did um, activities. So in the mind garden, you pulled out limiting beliefs that are weeds. In the heart cave, you healed the broken heart crystals. In the soul, you connected with the universe and, you know, sent your manifestations into the abyss. So it's really, it's really, really fun. It's like an inner child connection, but also a deeper journey. It's pretty much as deep as you want to make it. So I would love to continue those. I would love to come to the States maybe next year to bring those workshops there. But for the retreats, I would love to dedicate one whole day to the mind garden because there's so much you can do there, you know, with the limiting beliefs and intention and reflection and inner child connection too. And then an entire day for the heart. So opening your heart and you can also, you know, include yoga, like heart opening, flows and everything. And obviously lots of art. And then a whole day for the soul and maybe a fourth day to integrate all all three so I love it. imagination would be the the major part of of the retreats imagination and healing yourself and navigating your inner world through imagination I love it and I love hearing your passion when you speak about how excited you are for these future events. I think that's what truly shines through and so people feel that and that's why it resonates. Um, I'm also curious, can you share a bit about where you learned all of these things that you now, like all of this knowledge that you now have? Like, was that a journey, like getting to this place? Like where, where did you, did you read a lot of books? Like how did this happen? Basically, combination of books, podcasts, retreats, 
conversations, personal experience. Um, and now I'm looking to do my yoga teacher training in October in Nepal. And I'm also really, really interesting, uh, really interested in studying clinical hypnosis because through using those techniques, you can get into that space of like being in between of dreaming and awake where you really can engage your imagination, where a lot of healing happens. So it's definitely still learning in progress. <laughs> yeah. That's so exciting though. Yeah, it never stops. It never stops. I, I never want to stop learning. I'm excited to be more in the student role this year as well. So I can actually, you know, upgrade and level up on my knowledge for the retreats that I'll do next year. I love it. I'm so excited for you. All right, Annie, if you could leave our listeners with one final piece of advice or wisdom, what would it be? I think I want to bring it back to inner child connection. Yeah, spend more time with yourself, be more playful, engage your imagination, and just tune into that part of yourself that is still innocent and playful and doesn't care about being productive. Because I feel like I feel like that is truly healing in a world that is that needs you to be productive every single day. Love it. All right, Annie, where can we find you online? So you can find me on Instagram at dreamymoons underscore moons or my website www.dreamymoons.com.au and my personal Instagram is at Annie Parasova. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sharing your energy today. I just totally like, I get your vibe. You're so intuitive. You're so creative. You're just like flowing through life and manifesting and it's working out for you. <laughs> and I'm so happy for you. Thank yeah. you. It's, this conversation was so beautiful and something I needed to have as well. It's so energizing, honestly. I'm like charged in the day. Oh, good, good. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for sharing today. Thank you. Thank you.